Okay, Moondog here. Today I have a rather interesting looking scope, a very aggressively designed scope uh, sent to me by Texas Precision Optics, and I want to thank them for sending this out. Uh, this is their Sniper ZT5, which is, well, I don't know how to say this without sounding deprecating, but the name just sounds a little like they're trying too hard to make it seem like this is a military grade sniper scope. Uh, as far as I know, no branch of the military uses this, um, but you know, maybe some other country does. Uh, the world's a big place. Uh, if you know if this is actually used by any military sniper, please leave me a comment. Uh, but. Um, Aside, the name aside, uh, it's actually a nicely designed scope overall, at least in you know, my initial impressions of it, uh, but not quite as expensive as a Rhydon or Athlon. So it exists somewhat in that sort of uh, value budget tier on the higher end of that. And, uh, well, it seems well made, and we're going to take a look if it actually does perform or if it's just all looks. So we're going to take it out of the box and show you what you get. Uh, and we're going to take it outdoors and take a look through the scope uh, and take it out to the range and see how well it performs. So let's get started. Okay, so this is the Sniper ZT5-25. has a little uh, magnetic flap there. And actually, well, I'll take a look at this. Um, this is really solid, dense foam here, just like the kind that you'd have uh, at a gym or a playground. So that is definitely heavy duty in terms of, of protection here. Uh, let's see what it comes with here. We have, oh, we have a, a kill flash. That's uh, the honeycomb style uh, filter that goes in, in front of uh, the scope. We have the scope itself. Let's take that out here. And oh, check this out. It comes with the rail, and not only does it come with the rail, it comes with the rail actually mounted on here. We'll have to see if that actually uh, is pretty close to zero and level. It comes with a Picatinny um, top on the rear ring, so you can mount on a, uh, a red dot or secondary um, uh, backup sight if you wanted to, I suppose. I don't think it comes with one. And it comes with uh, caps already on there. Uh, the CNC, the overall industrial design is, is pretty um, pretty unique it's very aggressive and look at that that is I guess some sort of kind of kind of like a throw lever but uh, definitely different um, almost I would say uh, maybe uh, anime mech style in in its uh, design trips pretty smoothly surprisingly for a relatively inexpensive first vertical plane scope I was expecting a much rougher yeah, surprised. And let's see the uh, parallax here. Smooth, stiff, but actually not too stiff for a, for a new scope. Also very smooth. And see, does it have a fast focus underneath? Pry this cap off so we can take a look at that. Oh, nicely knurled here too. Very aggressive texturing and knurling on there for the fast focus. Let's see. A, bit, a little bit rough as it goes to um, its minimum position, but not too bad. I can hear more, more friction than feel it, so that's something. But at the very end, it's a, it was just a little bit rough there. Yeah, you can hear that. No, it, the batteries are not in here. Oh, here they are. The batteries on the side gives you a set of two, so they are CR2032 batteries and a set of adjustment Allen wrenches as well. And what, else, what other goodies come in here? You got uh, a sunshade. And you have a uh, parallax focus wheel. Let's see what else you get here. I got oh, a little pack of uh, microfiber cleaning cloth. So let's take a listen to these turrets. Ah, very audible. And it is very tactile. Let me see if there's any slop. No, no, no slop. So these turrets aren't bad. And are they locking? Yeah, let's try these out, pull them open. Audible, not as tactile as the elevation adjustment, but still pretty good. 
Yep, that's nice and tight. And they are uh, resettable. You just unscrew these, the coin. So super easy, so you can reset your, your zeros. But you know the proof is in the pudding. Um, we'll take this out to the range, take a look at the reticles, test out the turrets. Uh, so let's go out there. So let's start by taking a look at the reticle. This is a sort of modified German T-style precision reticle. It's very fine, perhaps too fine for hunting, but a thin, fine reticle is preferred for bullseye target shooting. We're looking at the peak of Mount Davidson, approximately 1,300 yards away, and we're looking at it through the scope at its lowest power setting of 5 magnification, so we can get the best sense of overall clarity, contrast, and saturation, because uh, at higher magnifications, we're just magnifying any faults in the glass. Now, I'm going to zoom it in, but you can already see that the image, while bright, lacks contrast detail. It's a bit milky. But at this price point, that's to be expected. Here and that's what we're seeing at 25 power at 1300 yards we can see that little white uh, marker trailhead marker there to the just to the left of the center crosshairs that sign is about 30 36 inches tall which makes it a pretty good proxy for a steel target at 1300 yards the reticle can be illuminated so let's take a look at a nearby shaded hedge one two three four five Green, one, two, three, four, five. Zoom up to 25 power. Okay, this is green, five, four, three, two, one. Red, one, five, four, three, two, one. Next, let's take it out to the range and see what targets look like through the scope at 100 yards. But first, just take a moment here to hit that like and subscribe buttons. It's a little gesture. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. It's absolutely free. But it really does encourage me to make more videos like this. And if you've got any interest in gadgets, check out my other channel, Moondog R&D, where I review gadgets and, and other gear. If you don't see a link now, you'll find one at the end of the episode. Okay, we're going to do a box test and see if this will return back to its original starting point after rotating it a full rotation on the turret. So we're going to go up, full rotation, and then we're going to go windage, a full rotation. Then let's bring that back on the elevation. back on the windage to zero and we're back so yes it passed the box test and we're gonna see if it tracks we're gonna move this down 16 just four clicks and then we're gonna move that over to four clicks and yeah that totally seems to track Let's see if we can bring this up one two three four and that's the wrong way. Yeah, all right. So it does track at 100 yards. That is an MOA grid target. So, wow, okay. I'm actually uh, impressed with uh, how well this thing tracks. Now, I forgot to film the range of adjustments, but it's got 30 MOA of both vertical and horizontal adjustments. But more importantly, does it return to zero if you really abuse those turrets? Let's find out. All right, we're going to do the nipple twister test here. We're just going to turn these turrets random directions. And see if it'll return to its original start location and dial it back to zero. And yeah, pass an apple twister. Okay, I'm taking a still image from the video footage of the scope so that we can closely examine and analyze the image clarity and resolution. And we can see a bit of purple fringe, a chromatic aberration along the white edges of the targets and the target frame. Now, this is indicative of uh, lower quality uh, coatings on the glass, but overall, 
um, pretty pretty sharp. Uh, you're going to get some softening around the edges, which is typical of most scopes under a thousand dollars, or even some scopes under five hundred dollars are going to have a bit of uh, softening around the uh, the outer edges. Um, center is not bad actually. And uh, I can clearly make out uh, the 22 holes on the target on the left-hand side of the reticle. Um, that is a reactive sticker target, about a uh, three-inch target. Uh, I can make out a hole below the target, a 22 hole on paper, but I can't make out a second hole along the bottom edge of the paper. Next, let's take a look at the U.S. Air Force's optical resolution chart on the right, and I'm going to do a 200% digital zoom on the image. Now, unlike TV shows, in real life, when you digitally magnify an image, you're not enhancing it, you're just magnifying everything wrong with it, all that blurriness, all the blown out, look at all that purple fringe. But, let's look at that optical resolution chart. I'm surprised that I can resolve, I can make out individual horizontal and vertical lines down to element 4 in group negative 1, and I can make out the vertical lines in element 6. Now for comparison, this is better than the Vortex Diamondback Tactical that I reviewed, and I'll include a link to that. Now is this as sharp as a thousand dollar loophole? No, no. Uh, the chromatic aberrations, uh, the lack of detail, and the images is kind of blown out, and it's got a kind of a tight eye box. But for a sub five hundred, in fact, for a sub three hundred dollar scope, um, this is better than I expected. And that statement pretty much encapsulates my entire review of this scope. And now I'm not afraid to admit that I was biased against the scope from the start because of the name, but after testing it, I can honestly say I'm impressed, especially for a scope that retails for less than $300. Great for a budget build. Now at that price tier, there may be some QC issues. In fact, the first scope they sent me, the Elevation Turret, the MOA hash marks didn't fully line up. Now that'll often happen with budget scopes and even better known brands like Athlon have that problem with their budget line. Texas Precision Optics does offer a lifetime warranty on all of their scopes. It's not as dummy proof as Vortex's no fault warranty because it doesn't cover abuse or shenanigans. But to their credit, Texas Precision Optics did send me a new scope after I sent back the defective scope uh, without an issue. Now, maybe they were being extra nice because I'm on YouTube, but if you own a sniper scope and have dealt with a customer service, please leave me a comment and let us know what that was like. Now, of course, the next step is to do long-term testing with a scope and after a few months to see how durable and reliable it is. Uh, but I'll be sure to post a, an update video when I do. So hit that like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified when I do. And if you want to find out where you can buy one of these scopes, check out my blog for more information. I'll include a link in the video description. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Moondog, out. If you enjoyed this video, please share it on forums, Facebook, Reddit, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, MeWe, whatever social media you're on. And if you want to see all of my videos, check out MoondogIndustries.com.